I'm standing here at 316 Hobson, which our goal was to make $50,000 in six months. We're now at month 12. Let's go inside and see what actually happened. So let's go ahead and take a look at the house and hear why we're currently at month 12 when we were supposed to be done six months ago. So we bought this property for $265,000. We estimated that we were gonna end up spending about $70,000 in renovating it. And we were hoping to be able to sell it for about $450,000 to $460,000. So there was obviously gonna be enough room in there for a pretty healthy profit. But unfortunately, we are now about $165,000 into this property for between renovations and holding costs and the cost of the money just to hold on to the property. It's really got us to a point where the fix and flip, where we were thinking we were going to make 50 plus thousand dollars, has now turned into we're probably gonna lose money on this deal. So let's go ahead and take a look at problem one that happened, which was dealing with the city of Mesa. So we're excited, we closed on the property, we just finished demoing everything out. We're getting started to start our renovations and we get this tag on the property called a red tag, which basically says, hey, stop working. You cannot do any more work until you get permits and have our city inspectors come out. And it was at that point that I was really, really upset because they do things like this. We're standing in a bedroom and we have our hot water heater in a bedroom. Now, why is this? I really don't know. I don't think a hot water heater belongs in a bedroom. I think that belongs more so in like a garage or somewhere outside the property. But due to the city of Mesa getting involved in this project, they get to dictate what some of the things have to come out like when we finish the project, which one of those things was, hey, we want the hot water heaters inside the property. And actually in the plans you submitted, we want the hot water heater to be in the bedroom. Having to deal with the city, it isn't always a pain in the butt, but it just happened to be on this particular project because like I said, we were supposed to spend six months between start to finish and have this property listed and sold and done with. Dealing with the city, what happened was they put that red tag on our property. We couldn't continue doing work. And then what we had to do was submit plans. We had to go back and forth on plan submissions for months, which added literally six months of time to the project for little things, just like this little water heater challenge. Now let's talk about problem number two. When we did our initial walk through the house, the people that were living here, it, it was a hoarder house. They had stuff all over the property. In this particular room right here, there was so much stuff in this hallway, we couldn't literally open this door at all. And so basically what we had to do is say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what's going on in this room? And they're like, oh yeah, everything. We just have a bunch of stuff in there. It's all storage and a bunch of garbage and whatever. So we're like, okay, cool, we'll, we'll leave that room alone. Well, what it looks like now versus what it looked like then was significantly different. What we found was another surprise once we got into the property. Once we were able to open that door, get into this room and see what was going on, it was actually on fire at some point. So they were just withholding that this room had caught on fire. And so what happens at that stage? Well, the city had other requirements as well. So not only did the city have things that they wanted us to fix with the other bedroom, which was putting the hot water heater in there. They also, because this room had been caught on fire, literally everything was kind of melted in this room. We had to follow all of these other procedures to make sure that everything was repaired the right way, which of course we were going to do anyways, but they just add, you know, a little bit of extra red tape and politics to it. So it took a little bit longer than it should have. So here we are 12 months into this project and now we have a choice of what are we going to do with it? Because when we look at it, we're over $400,000 into this deal. We're around, you know, 410, $415,000 into the deal. And we're expecting to be able to list the property for $450,000. So if you do the math with, you know, closing costs that we'd have to list this with an agent, we have to pay some of the buyer's closing costs, all of those costs inclusive within this deal, we we're going to be set to lose money on this. And we're still not done. There's still some landscaping work that's being done. That's going to be another $10,000. So without even being completely done spending money on this project, the other thing that's happened is if you haven't been living under a rock, you'll notice that interest rates have been going up. People are talking about it's harder to qualify to buy a home. Inventory of homes is going significantly up. Well, how that affected us on this property is that last year when we bought it, we would normally be able to list a property like this, sell it within seven days or less and have the money in our bank account within 20, 30 days. Well, the reality 
ideas now, if we did that same thing today, properties just like this one are taking anywhere from 45 to 60 days to sell. So not only are we finishing the landscaping, we'd have the opportunity to list it at $450,000 and then wait for two months for it to probably sell, probably at a reduced rate because of the way that the market's going. So what do you do in this situation? If you're considering doing fix and flips yourself, I wanna give you two tips that we always make sure to have before we're going to move forward with flipping a property. The first tip is to have multiple exit strategies because in this situation, if we had to go ahead and list the property and sell it, we'd be recognizing a 40 plus thousand dollar loss. And so while having another exit strategy like keeping it as a long-term rental or maybe turning it into an Airbnb, it gives us other options to potentially maybe not not lose money today and over time actually be able to make some money on that property. And the second tip is always, always, always have a buffer on your budget. This is a special case because we had a special situation with the city, but typically what we'll do is anytime we come up with our complete budget for a project, including renovations and holding costs, we'll typically add upwards of 15% to the buffer. So if we think we're gonna spend all in 100 grand on a property, I'm going to assume we're gonna spend 115,000. So that best case scenario, we only spend 100, we make another $15,000 on the deal. Worst case scenario, that $15,000 extra buffer still put us in a position to be profitable on the deal. So what do we do? The option that we decided to take on this particular property was we decided not to take the loss on it and lose 40 to $50,000 today. And instead what we're doing is we're refinancing the property so that we can hold it for the long term. Our plan is probably to hold it for anywhere from seven to 10 years. So over that seven to 10 years, once we get some good tenants into the property, they'll be paying us rent every single month. We'll be able to get a little bit of cash flow. And then what our plan is from there is to also be able to get the tax write off while holding the property over these years as well. So turning a not so great situation into the best case scenario for what we got. Life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And so that's what we did here. Let me know in the comment section below, what would you do if you were me? Would you have kept this as a rental like we're going to do? Or would you have flipped this and just taken the L today?